Hello. I hope everyone is uh, keeping well, avoiding the virus and everything. Uh, I'm going to do a review today anyway, since not, uh, not else to do. Uh, I'm going to talk about one of my favourite albums, McCartney 2, uh, from 1980. Paul McCartney's second solo album, the follow-up to his debut solo album, 1970, McCartney, which I reviewed the other week. Um, so, this album is recorded in very similar circumstances to the first McCartney album. Um, that one was recorded as the Beatles were breaking up. This one was recorded as Wings was breaking up. Granted, the Wings breakup was a bit less um, bitter and uh, newsworthy uh, than the Beatles one. But anyway, um, yeah, so uh, similarly to the first album as well, Paul plays every instrument on this album. Um, he wrote every song, as you'd expect. He produced it. And it's recorded at home, predominantly, I think it was mainly done, was it, uh, his farm in Kintyre, up in Scotland, I think, and also in Sussex, his main house in Sussex. Um, Linda did some backing vocals as well, but other than that, it's entirely just him again. So anyway, what happened was he recorded a load of songs in the summer of 1979, in June and July. Uh, you got this thing called a synthesizer, which was brand new pretty much at that point. So he was just playing around with it and recorded a lot of stuff on it. And then once he'd recorded it all, he just sort of put it to the side and then he got back with wings. And I don't know if they started recording stuff or just started rehearsing for their upcoming tour uh, to support their recent album, Back to the Egg. Anyway, um, so obviously they, I think it was going to be a world tour. Uh, so it kicked off in the UK in December of 79 and... He played a new song that was unreleased at that point called Coming Up. And he said that it'd be coming out in 1980 sometime. Anyway, then in uh, January of 1980, Wings kind of had their fate sealed when they went to tour Japan. And when they arrived in customs, Paul was getting his bag searched and they found, uh, the customs officers found a load of, it was pot, wasn't it? And uh, he was arrested and put in prison for nine days before he was then deported and went back to Scotland. So yeah, uh, after that, Paul kind of lost interest in Wings. I think his interest in Wings by this point was getting quite low anyway. Um, but that kind of just ended it all together for him. So when he returned to Scotland, he returned his focus to this album, these recordings he'd made in the summer. And he put, he, I think he'd done 20 songs, but he put them all together. Or he, sorry, he condensed them down into an album of uh, 11 songs, I think it's on here. And he released it on the 16th of May, 1980. And um, yeah, like I said, it's his second solo album, which is quite crazy to think in 1980, this was, you know, Paul had been on the scene now for 20 years and it's his only second solo album. And, uh, oh, something I haven't said actually, the artwork for this album, I think is the best artwork of any Paul McCartney solo album, including uh, Ram and Wings, because they're sort of, they're different. Um, but yeah, I just love this photo of him. It's just a picture of him, which in this day, in these days is a very rare thing. I mean, when was the last time we got a clear photo of Paul McCartney on an album cover? Was it Press to Play? Was that the last time we got a clear photo? I know his face was on um, Flaming Pie and Driving Rain, but you know they were they were blurred photos really. And uh, Chaos on Creation was um, a picture when he was young. Oh, he was on Kisses, Kisses on the bottom, wasn't he? Um, if we can class that really. But yeah, but nevertheless, I think this is the best album cover he's ever had for a solo album. That's the back. Gatefold. This is the archive edition, by the way. Um, so yeah, anyway, as I was saying, this album came out 16th of May, 1980. And um, yeah, it uh, went straight in at number one in the album charts, which was Paul's first number one album since Venus and Mars. Um, so I potentially, um, if he, you know, what little faith he had left in Wings, he'd maybe lost by this point. That, you know, the first solo album he puts out in ten years goes straight into number one. I think maybe even the public interest in Wings had gone by this point, but but can't his solo career people were interested in still. Anyway, also the lead single of his album coming up, uh, which I have got. I should have got it out actually. Um, I don't know where it is. Um, that also. I think it got to number two in the charts, which, uh, yeah, again, it's pretty good. 
uh, I think his last number one single will have been Mullick and Tyre with Wings. Um, so yeah, I should uh, coming up single. I think got to number one in America, but it was a bit dodgy over there because the, the record company sort of stabbed him in the back and pushed the B side more than the A side, which was a live version of it. But anyway, um, so uh, I don't think there's anything else to say. Oh, obviously, um, this would be the last Paul McCartney album that would be released in John Lennon's lifetime. Um, John, when he was on like this album, said he sounds some of it. He sounds Paul sounds happy. Uh, other bits he sounds sad, which you know, on songs like Waterfalls and Summer's Day song, he does sound sad. But yeah. Anyway, I'll stop rambling and just get into the track by track review because it's already nearly been six minutes. This video. Uh, coming up is the opening track, lead single, and uh, one of my very favourite Paul McCartney album, uh, songs. It's a really catchy song. Um, I believe this was the song that inspired John Lennon to come out of retirement and make Double Fantasy. So for that alone, it should be considered a great song. But um, yeah, it's really catchy. It's just a really good song. The music video for it's great. There's not a lot to say. It's one of my favourite McCartney songs. Uh, Temporary Secretary comes next. Uh, I used to not like this song, but now I love it. It's like a little cult classic, this song. Um, so I've actually seen this live. I've seen Paul McCartney twice. Uh, first time I seen him was in Liverpool, which was 2015. And it was the third night of his tour. First night had been London. Second night, I think the second night was in Birmingham. And the first night in London, he'd done Temporary Secretary for the... First time ever he'd done it live, so uh, yeah, I was in I was in the third concert he ever did it live, um, and yeah, I'm really pleased he's done this song live. It's you know, as much as I love the Beatles and everything, it would be nice to see a Paul McCartney concert where he just doesn't do any Beatles songs. He just does his deeper cuts off his solo stuff. But yeah, temporary secretary. I think this song's ahead of its time. You know, it'd be ten years early or something. Um, yeah, it's really synthesizer heavy. Very, yeah, it's really synth heavy this one, and yeah, it's the sort of thing you could probably still hear in a nightclub these days. It wouldn't sound out of place. Really good song. Um, again, it's like a lot of this album. Actually, this is actually quite a divisive album. It's one of those ones you either love it or hate it. At the time, it got slated this album, even though it was a number one album. Um, but over the years, just like the first McCartney album, it has gained itself a bit of a reappraisal. Uh, I do think this is a better album than the first McCartney album. I think this one has been reappraised to a better level. But I think it's now more liked than the first McCartney album, just because it's not really a lot of it. There's not many incomplete songs on here that feel like it's just Paul messing about. They do feel like finished songs more. Uh, but anyway, Temporary Secretary is a probably a divisive song. It's one of these ones you'll either love it or you'll hate it. Um, and if you hate it, your your reason for hating it will probably be it's really annoying. Just like me. Um, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, good song. Uh, after that, on the way. This one is quite bluesy. Really nice guitar on here. Again, um, yeah, it's a really nice song. Um, really good vocal from Paul. Yeah, it's just a good song. Very bluesy, as I said. Uh, Waterfalls comes next. So this one is a slow one. Uh, a bit of a ballad. I think, I can't remember if I've read this or if I've imagined this, that Paul has said if he had his time again, he'd do this song differently. I've maybe imagined that, he maybe, or he maybe has said it, I don't know. But um, my only problem with this song is it goes on a bit. It's nearly five minutes long, just like my videos. Um, but yeah, no, I do think it goes on a bit, this, album, uh, this song. Uh, but yeah, it's all right. Uh, nobody Knows comes next. This is the first thing I would really call a rocker on this album. Potentially the only rocker on the album, really. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of fun, really, as is most of this album. It's just Paul having fun at home. Again, good song. Uh, right, side two opens with Front Parlour, which is an instrumental. Uh, again, it's quite synth-heavy, this one. Yeah, it's an alright instrumental. Nothing spectacular. Summer's Day song comes next. Um, I'm not a big fan of this one. I mean, it's alright, but... It's quite slow. This would be one of the ones where John meant uh, thought he sounded sad on it. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not a bad song. It's just a bit boring, this one. 
Uh, after that, Frozen Jap, another instrumental. Um, potentially a little reference to um, what happened in Japan. Yeah. Again, it's an instrumental. It's alright. It's nothing spectacular. Uh, Boogie Music comes next. This one's always sounded to me like Paul's trying to do an Elvis impression. Um, the lyrics are just silly lyrics. Just Paul having fun. Uh, but yeah, it's a really nice song. Yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, Dark Room comes next. I quite like Dark Room. Uh, yeah, it's good harmonies. I think it's just Paul harmonising with himself on this, but yeah, it's a good song. And uh, finally, closing track, One of These Days, which I think is one of the most underrated McCartney songs. It's the only song, really, on this album that I would say sounds like a traditional Paul McCartney song. Uh, it's a ballad. It's a re yeah, it's a really good song. Really good lyric, really good melody. Really good closing track. Yeah, it's a good song. So that's that, McCartney 2. Uh, standout tracks for me, my favourites, Coming Up, Temporary Secretary, On The Way, and One Of These Days. They're my four favourite tracks off this album. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not a bad album. Um, yeah, it's one of my personal favourite albums, but if I'm going to be, be a music critic, I wouldn't say it's one of Paul's best albums um, from a musical perspective, but in terms of an enjoyment perspective, I really enjoy this album because it's different. It's not, it's Paul doing something different. It's not him trying, it's like, he's not trying to be Paul McCartney on this album. He's trying to experiment more. You know, these days, Paul would never release an album like this. Uh, or if he did, he'd put it under the, what's that, the Fireman. He'd put it as now these days. He wouldn't put it under his own name. So, for, you know, I respect him for putting this out under his own name. And I always will. And yeah, it's a great little album. That's all I've got to say for now. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Ta-ra!